Hello, you are all very welcome to this brief review of the March 2020 Advanced Performance Management exam. My name is Connor Mateer and I am part of the education team at LearnSignal. Today I'll be taking you through some of the key points noted by the APM examining team from the recent sittings and going through an example question and solution from the March paper so that you can see these important points in practice. The examiner notes that as you progress from management accounting and performance management, the focus shifts towards evaluation and analysis with application of your knowledge to a particular scenario. It's important to remember that you do still need to have a strong grasp of this basic knowledge as it underpins the APM examination. So make sure you have a good technical foundation and ensure you go back and review content as needed. Without this understanding, you will have little information with which to evaluate. However, if you come to this exam expecting to repeat memorized material, you will probably only score between 20 and 30%. Providing rote learned answers or jargon terms will not provide you with a passing answer because as mentioned, at this level, it is principally about evaluation in a business scenario and you need to keep that focus in your head throughout. A good professional level answer goes beyond the mere repetition of how a technique works and focuses on relating it to the entity's specific environment. This leads into the essential point of making sure you answer the question being asked. And while this may sound like obvious advice, it is still something that is being missed by students, which we will see shortly in our example. The examiner makes every attempt to reward meaningful, commercially aware and insightful analysis, provided such analysis is within a specific context of the question asked and demonstrates an understanding of the technical course areas. So make sure you go beyond the mere information and calculations and explain the implication of these with justification for your opinions. It's important that you try to think of the implications from the scenario in a real business context and think logically what you would do in a work situation. Additionally, the examiner has also noted that some students repeat the same point continuously in their answers. You won't get marks for repetition, even if you separate the points. You need to provide new, well-developed points in the context of the scenario that add value to the answer. Finally, don't forget to always remain professional in your answer. Professionalism isn't just about good layout and grammar, it is also tone. Try to think about the audience of your answer and how you would be expected to address them, as well as the context of what you say. For example, don't bombard the strategic level with irrelevant operational detail. On top of lacking a professional format, answers that take the form of short bullet point lists are unlikely to be addressing the need to justify suggestions or analyze issues. Through practicing writing professional answers to past paper questions, you will develop the skills to perform admirably in this area. Remember, answers should have suitable headings, an introduction, a logical structure, and a clear and concise style. We're now going to look at part of a question from the March 2020 APM computer-based exam to show some of the points highlighted before in practice. Question 1 in Section A introduced us to Akilti Retail, and as we can see on screen, the information to be found in each exhibit is listed. For those who have worked through practice CBE questions before, they will be familiar with the structure of the platform, which includes information within the different exhibits, the question requirement, and the response templates, which include a word processor and spreadsheet. Looking first at the requirement, you can see we are asked to write a report to the CEO of Akilti, in which we respond to her instructions around these four areas, and the marks available for each. For those who have worked through recent past papers, they will be familiar with the embedded requirements in question one, and we can see that the requirements here are directly linked to the supporting exhibits, which will give us more details on what is required. Remember, the marks available should be your indication of how long to spend on each part. I like to work on the basis that after your initial reading of the instructions, you have three hours or 180 minutes to complete it. There are 100 marks available, so you should spend 1.8 minutes per mark. We're going to be focusing on part one, current performance reporting, which is worth 15 marks. So at 1.8 minutes per mark, that means we would have 27 minutes to complete this part in the exam. As we move on to look at the company information, we find out that Akilti is a listed closed selling business, which has sold its last physical shop recently, 
slowly transitioning into a website-only business selling clothes directly to consumers. We are told they have a mission to deliver long-term returns to shareholders through a combination of sustainable growth in earnings per share and payment of cash dividends, and that this mission will be achieved through objectives of improving product ranges, increasing the number of customers in their individual spend, focusing on customer service, and improving profitability by efficient cost control in purchasing and inventory management. We are given additional information about how the board feels performance has been good compared to other retailers in general, but that it is lagging behind the growth of the online retail clothing sector. It's highlighted that many of the systems and processes in Akilti have yet to adjust to the new reality of being a web-only business. When we move on to the current performance reporting exhibit, we can find the embedded requirement with more information of what exactly is required. We can see there is a debate amongst the board as to whether performance towards the mission and its objectives is being usefully measured, and there is concern that fault might lie in the board's performance report for annual strategic review, which can be found in Appendix 1. As such, the CEO asks for a full evaluation of the current performance report in light of this debate, and in terms of best practice for reporting performance. Finally, it highlights that there is no need to suggest new indicators which is an important point to ensure you don't get sidetracked in your answer. And therein lies the detail of your requirement. Before we get into how you should have approached this, I want you to remember two specific points we highlighted from the examiner report. Make sure you answer the requirement and make sure your answer is in sufficient detail applying to the scenario. While these may seem straightforward or obvious, the examiner noted it was very disappointing to see many students evaluated the performance of the company instead of their performance reporting system. Missing this potentially cost you all of the marks available. Remember, read the requirements carefully, particularly when they are embedded in the scenario. The second point to consider is you need to give sufficient depth to your answer too. The report highlights that simply stating they should aim for best practice isn't enough. It needs to be applied in the scenario's context and you have to give reasons effectively showing why a given piece of advice is best practice. Okay, now let's have a quick look at the performance report from Appendix 1. We're not going to get into the specifics of each item, but as you can see, there's lots of information available. Remember, we are focused on the report itself, not the performance of the business. I'm now going to go quickly through the suggested solution. Before we get into the content of your answer, it's important to remember that you will need to structure this information professionally in order to not just score the professional marks, but also to clearly display your points to the examiner. A good approach taken within the solution, which covers the requirement, is to assess the strengths and weaknesses of the report in terms of whether it addresses the objectives of the business, contains appropriate information for decision making in line with best practice, and is well presented. The report details and simple introduction shown will suffice. You don't need to waste your time with lengthy, unnecessary introductions. After that, consider splitting the points we made above into subheadings and populating the details under these. So, our approach to assessing the report and the mission and objectives of the Kilti, whether the report addresses these objectives, other points in meeting best practice, and an assessment of management's commentary. It's useful to copy in from across the company information that their primary aim is to deliver long-term returns to shareholders through a combination of sustainable growth in earnings per share and payment of cash dividends. This is to be achieved by the secondary objectives of improving product ranges, increasing the number of customers in their individual spend, focusing on customer service, and improving profitability by efficient cost control in purchasing and inventory management. This could be inserted and formatted using the copy and paste functions. As you go through the performance report, you should pick up that while the report does provide much information which is useful to assess the achievement of the company's objectives, it is not complete or always clear on all objectives, and there lies the crux of our initial analysis. In the marking scheme, you get one mark for each valid point based on the scenario information. Following the primary and secondary objectives as outlined, points that could have been made include that, for the main objective, the sustainability of EPS is not clear from the report without forecast figures. For improving product ranges, 
This can be inferred from revenue growth and other measures relating to the customer perspective. However, these measures are not precise as they are also affected by service levels. For increasing customers and spend, this can be seen under the customer response heading. But rather than seeking to only increase the number of accounts, it would be more useful to measure the active accounts, otherwise resources may be poured into account holders who never purchase. Focusing on customer service is indirectly measured in revenue growth and the customer response, as well as directly in meeting deadlines. However, there is no indicator capturing the customer experience, particularly now that this has moved to an entirely online business and their ease of use on this. Finally, profitability through efficient cost control is captured through the gross margin, but there are no inventory control indicators, such as around obsolescence or write-off. If you expanded on these points and also considered whether there was sufficient information for decision making by the board, you stood to score well on this part of the requirement. Moving on to additional points in meeting best practice and performance reporting. Remember, these had to be applied in the context of the scenario and sufficiently developed. Some areas that could have been highlighted include that while the report is usefully broken into different perspectives similar to the balanced scorecard with financial, customer, an internal process, there is no mention of innovation and learning, which is unusual for a company dependent on technology. The financial part of the report breaks the sales into four areas, so it might be useful to consider operating margins for each product type also. Additionally, if cost control is of major importance, then variances to budget may assist the board in monitoring and controlling them. Finally, the mix of financial and non-financial indicators gives the board a good vantage point to judge customer satisfaction. However, the lack of any external benchmarks, such as an industry growth and margins, might explain why other similar companies are outperforming a kilty. You could also talk about the general presentation of the information and whether there was a data overload in the report. Finally, it is useful to develop some points on the management commentary. While the commentary is succinct and in a sensible priority order of Akilti's objectives, it does not address all of the objectives, and the comments are quite vague. The first point does address the primary objective, but the claim that performance is satisfactory when the test is that growth occurs and currently performance is static seems questionable. The second point measures the attractiveness of the product range through the sales growth, and this appears a reasonable financial measure. The third point is indirectly related to customer satisfaction, which is notoriously difficult to measure. Combined with the growing sales, the comment above at average spend and growing number of customers appears to indicate satisfaction. However, a better measure might consider the number of active accounts rather than all accounts. Average spend per customer in the period is a better measure of customer satisfaction than average spend per purchase. The final point on delivery time could also be considered part of the customer satisfaction measurement, and this means that the objective relating to efficiency is not commented upon. To conclude, let's go back to the fundamental points raised by the examiner. Underlying technical knowledge is unavoidable. You need this to sufficiently analyze and evaluate in the context of the scenario, and having this will give you confidence that the points you make are valid. Read the requirements and plan your answer carefully, always ensuring you are hitting the key points with application to the scenario. And finally, make sure your answers are to a professional standard. Aim to have suitable headings, an introduction, a logical structure, and a clear and concise style throughout. The key to improving on these points is through question practice. So make sure you practice past paper questions under exam conditions ahead of the exam. Additionally, you should also make use of the valuable resources available on the ACCA website, such as the full examiner report and technical articles. If you can do this and improve on the points that I've highlighted in this video, you should perform well in your upcoming APM exam. Thank you for listening and good luck.